Okay, so um, design criteria then. Um, like I said, we, we, were, we were looking we were looking there at the pros and cons of each type of collector. So the evacuated tubes are lighter and more efficient, but can be more expensive and less attractive. Um, and the uh, area of the panels to be used will be dictated by the amount of hot water demand in the house. And normally that there will be um, calculated by the installer. So they will, they will calculate how much hot water the house will use and then they will install a panel to suit. Um, so it's important that you have a good uh, um, a recognized installer. So M the MCS accreditation scheme uh, is what they use to accreditate installers. So um, you need to look out for that. Um, the pipe work run um, should be as short as possible to avoid heat loss. So whenever you're installing these panels, if they can be positioned very close to your hot water cylinder is best. Um, and the pipes should all be well insulated as well. Remember that the hot water in these, um, in these systems can be very, very hot. Uh, an example is out at Camp Hill, whenever we installed the uh, cylinder out at Camp Hill, the company got a local plumber to install this, the, the pipe work. And he put standard insulation on the pipework. The actual insulation melted uh, because of the heat of the water traveling through the pipework. So you have to make sure that you have got um, the proper insulation. Then the other thing as well is that um, the, the cylinder that you put in, quite often you'll need to put in a new cylinder, which is like a, either like a, a double coil cylinder um, which is like the, the one that uh, I think Jonathan, you said you had a, a double coil cylinder in, or it could be um, a buffer tank. Now, both of those cylinders are generally a lot bigger than the standard cylinder. So if you have a house that has got limited space, you may need to put in an alternative system, which is the um, thermal siphon system which is a local product again from a Northern Irish company. So it can be installed with a standard cylinder. So the cylinder stays there and it looks a little bit like a Willis, um, a Willis a heater or a Willis a type of immersion heater, electric heater for your boiler. It just sits beside the tank um, and it's basically a heat exchanger. Otherwise, you're much, much better, it's much better if you go for a larger storage tank or a large um, buffer tank. The reason being is that if it's bright one day, uh, it, it may not be bright the next day, and in this country that's quite often the case, but there will be enough hot water left in your tank to, to, to sustain you through that second day, and then hopefully then it'll, uh, it'll brighten up. So today, for instance, if I look, look out the window now, that day has dulled down quite a bit. So it's not, it's not nearly as bright as it was. So my tank of hot water may have been uh, filled up quite substantially this morning, um, but now there's no sun, so you know um, I need to take advantage of all that heat. Um, for a domestic hot water system, um, usually about 0.75 uh, meters squared of plate collector, or the equivalent of, a, of an evacuated tube is needed per person because of heat loss in the system. So um, normally you'll see something about a 2.5 meter square plate collector uh, on most dwellings. Um, obviously on larger dwellings like, for instance, um, out of Camp Hill where they have uh, quite a few people living in one property, or if you've got um, an old people's home or, or some kind of home of that nature. So usually it's between 2.5 and 4 meters uh, squared of plate collector and between 2 and 3 meters squared of evacuated tube. Um, now, if you want to look um, at the Kingspan site, um, I do have a video up on the other, uh, on, on the blackboard. Uh, for Kingspan, and also on the Kingspan website, there is a, a, a document that explains how you can orientate the evacuated tubes to face south. So if you have a building that faces east or west, so the, the slope of your roof faces east or west, then obviously you're going to have an issue with um, a flat pit. Um, 
But what you can do with the evacuated tube, as I said before, is you can turn them. And even if it's a flat roof, and I have seen this before, where you have a flat roof, and the um, and, and say it's a historical building, so you're not able to put anything on the actual sloped roofs of the building because of um, because of the historical nature of the building. You can actually put these evacuated tubes on a flat roof, and then each individual plate uh, evacuated tube with its plate can be then tilted towards the sun, and that's that's a very good option as well. So that that can overcome um, issues where you have major building constraints. Regulations then, um, there, there is a, a fantastic resource, I'll, I'll have a look here to see if I can uh, show it to you, uh, just let me see um, if I open up a new site. This, this, is, this is a fantastic resource for, uh, for anybody looking at renewables, so it's the um, planning um, yes, the planning portal. So it's the planningportal.gov.uk. Now, um, in this portal, what you will see is a section, do you need permissions? And in this, you will see an interactive house. So I'm hoping that you guys are going to be able to see this interactive house. Can you all see that? Sorry, guys, I've, uh, I've muted some of you because uh, there, uh, there was a lot of noise. Sorry, Neil and Jonathan. So you're back on again. Can you, can you see that, that house? Well, we can, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so this is, this is fantastic uh, because what it does is it shows you all of the requirements on building control for uh, a standard semi-detached house. You have things like the garage, the fence, the hardscape landscaping, the fuel tank, paving, front wall, gates, all, everything like that there. But it also does renewables. So say for instance we've got the wind turbine here, we've got solar panels, um, you, you have as well, let me see if I can find it, um, ground floor rear view. There is, there is, um, Yeah, there's a ground source heat pump as well. We'll go back to the front view. Um, and so there's all those technologies, and you can go into the loft, the first floor, the ground floor, etc. So, so that's that's really good. So if we go to solar panels, um, it then brings you up this new box, which basically tells you what plan permission is required. So here you can read there that it says. In many cases, fixed solar panels to your roof is likely to be considered permitted development under planning law with no need to apply for planning permissions. There are, however, important exemptions and provisos which must be uh, observed. So if you need to learn more, you can learn more on the planning portal. The other interesting thing as well is it actually gives you a link then to building regulations. So you click on that, and this will tell you um, uh, if you wish to install solar panels on your roof, uh, building regulations will normally apply. The ability of the existing roof to carry the load weight of the panel will need to be checked and proven. Some strengthening work may be required. And again, you can, you can go down through that. And lastly, then, you've got greener homes, uh, which tells you a bit about that, although we don't have that uh, here at the moment. So that there's, that's a, a fantastic uh, facility. That that can take um, use of. If you guys are, um, you know the way you guys are all looking at um, uh, right up this last section of your the last section. Sorry, the, the second last section of your assignment talks about energies, renewable energies um, that are applicable for a property. Well, you can use this site here to look at likely planning up 
planning constraints or building control constraints. So that's that's a good good place to go to to investigate that. Okay, um, incentives. The there are incentives at the moment through um, through the local government. These incentives that I mentioned here, the renewable heat incentive, is not in place at the moment. So they, they're talking about it coming on very, very soon. There is, I believe, a grant that you can take advantage of for installation of solar panels. But that changes dramatically from year on year. So you have to keep, keep an eye on what, what is happening with regards to grants and that. And the best people to speak to, people to, speak to uh, with regards to grants and what's happening to grants is they are the installers. So if you do want to install a system, it may be a case that you, can, that you might be advised to wait a year or two before you actually install it. OK, and, uh, and then standards. So, as I mentioned before, you have the micro generation. So, with the MCS um, accreditation or MSC, sorry, MCS accreditation, which is for the micro generation certificate. So, the micro generation certificate scheme that's run by Action Renewables. So, if we have a look at Action, uh, the Action Renewables website. Go to Action Renewables and and there you'll see um, the accreditation um, MCS accreditation. So that's that that button there. The MCS accreditation scheme is an independent scheme that certifies micro generation products and installers. So that's 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 why it's so important. So if you want to um should be yes, uh certification lists um MCS credit installers Northern Ireland. And here you'll see um the installers for all different types of technology. So you can see if uh, you can see here where I've highlighted that that's the accreditation for a particular um, technology. So these guys here are accredited for wind turbines. The guys below uh, are accredited for solar thermal and heat pumps, which is uh, solar thermal. So that there's that's the list. As you can see, there's quite a considerable number of people. Not all of them are within Northern Ireland. Let me add. So you need to be uh, you, need, you need to take a look. So if anybody's interested, um, that's the people to talk to. So again, for the for the um, assignment, if you can recommend or you can maybe highlight somebody that would be installing the system, or even if you wanted to ring them up and ask how much ask them how much uh, they get a. a Standard panel would be, or something like that. You know, it dep depends on the technology that you're looking at installing as well, obviously. Okay, so um, solar thermal has a number of um, pros and cons with regards um, to our heat sources. So it will reduce energy bills when moving from fossil fuel systems. Uh, it can reduce carbon emissions when moving from fossil fuel systems. It can lower reliance on imported energy sources, such as gas or oil. So it's great from that point of view. You're using a lot less oil if you've got an oil system during the summer months, obviously. Um, it can be installed to work with existing hot water systems. Then the cons, the system doesn't, doesn't work uh, Equally all year round, meaning an auxiliary system source of energy needed in the winter months. Um, so you need something else to supplement the water heating. Some people don't like the way the solar water heating panels look. Some people do. Some people would say that a solar water heating panel will add to the value of your property. Um, personally, if I saw solar water heating on a property, I would actually be more inclined to look at that property than one that didn't have. So that you know, if you have two equal properties, then I would look at that property more closely. And there are building constraints such as the um, ideal need to be south facing 
we need to put a short distance connected to the cylinder. Although, as I mentioned, that has um, some eliminated almost by the uh, by this, the the evacuated um, the evacuated tubes. Um, okay, so capital cost. Um, a typical system of, uh, of the size that we mentioned. Uh, which is between three and, and four meters squared, uh, will range in, in cost um, about well, around, around between two and a half and five thousand pounds. Um, the the there may be an increase in that cost due to the tanks installed um, and, and and things of that nature. So. Um, <coughs> Savings obviously depend on the, the type of fuel that you're replacing. So if you're replacing um, oil, then obviously you're going to get a bigger saving than if you're replacing gas. Um, oh, Christine Irvine. Christine Irvine Hello. is stuck under our class. Hello, Christine. Maybe she doesn't have her headphones on this <laughs> This, this is this is this is uh, worrying. Christine's obviously a spy in her midst. Not well. I don't know if she hears because I don't hear. She's she's not talking to us. Oh. Right, so um, so savings. If you consider that the energy saving on the on, on your bill is going to be half of your hot water bill, so um, you, if, if you worked out how much your energy bill was, um, oh, Christine's left the main room. That she didn't like this, guys. Um, if you work out how much your energy bill is, then you're looking at about around about 12 to 15 percent of that is going to be your hot water requirements. Um, so it works out about anything up to about 400 pound a year. Um, now, if you're looking at an installation of uh, three and a half thousand, say 4,000 pounds, then 400 pound a year is going to be a 10-year payback period. Um, so it is important to, to look at that because it might be um, it, it, it might be longer than you, you anticipated. So the the payback period, like I say, will depend on the cost of the fuel and the cost of the solar water heating system. Um, so the cost of the installation and the cost of maintaining the system. Now the advantage with the solar water heating system is that generally it doesn't actually require much maintenance. Um, the savings is the amount of energy saved, the cost of the energy source that has been replaced, any grants, so it does attract grants and any renewable heat incentives in the future. That's another thing that, that hopefully will come in. Um, so the amount of time, trouble and oops, hold on. The amount of time it takes for savings to pay back the initial cost of the system is called the payback period, and it is useful measure to see whether the system is worth worth to, what's meant to install. The net uh, present value is also the useful figure as it shows what value all the savings and costs in the future would be worth in your bank account now. A number above zero means that it's worth investing in. So that's something else you might want to look at. Okay, so that's that's us for th that session. Um, sorry, we were, there was a few uh, problems at the beginning of that session, guys. Uh, but I think it was pretty worthwhile. What I want you to do is, um, is, is take a look through that yourselves. You've got that on the blackboard, so take a look through it yourselves. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put up some of the questions that are likely to come up in the exam, and I want you to. Uh, go through those questions and, um, and, and, and mark them off. It's only multiple choice. So I'll, I'll put them on Blackboard now, um, and you should be able to see them up on Blackboard in the next um, say 10, 10, 20 minutes. Okay, so are we all right? Yeah, thank you. Yep, so see you all tomorrow at 2 o'clock.
Hello. Okay then. See you then, guys. Yes,